But I want to take a moment to pray for our country. Amen. Father, this morning as we stand in all of you, we thank you for our country, our nation, and our world. We thank you, Father, for the freedoms and the privileges that we have as Americans here in our country. We thank you for the birth of our country and what it stands for, what it represents, freedom to all mankind. We pray that, God, today that you will just bless our country, be with all the officials, Lord God, who lead us and direct us in our country, Father. We pray in Jesus' name that your hand will be upon them, that they will be led by your Spirit, that you will grant them wisdom, favor, and understanding in all the decisions that they make, Lord God, concerning our country. We thank you, Father, for the men and women that have gone before us and fought even for our country to give us freedom physically. But, Father, we also thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die for us and give us life for us, Lord God, so that we can also be free spiritually. We thank you, Father, and we don't take it for granted. We don't take it lightly, God. We thank you for all that you continue to do and are doing in our lives, in our world, in our nation, and in our country, and in our communities around us. God, we give you the praise and glory for this wonderful country, the United States of America. We thank you, Father, for it, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. One last time. Come on, give the Lord praise. Thank the Lord for our country. Amen. Amen. God bless you as you'll be seated today. I don't know about you, but I was going to preach a patriotic message today, but I really felt in prayer God gave me this message for you, and I feel it's a timely message for you today. I really feel it's a timely message, and I, I always told, uh, even told uh, Tori, Tori, I want you to make my video screens behind me of fireworks and so on because I was really honestly going to preach a patriotic message. But in prayer time, God gave me a message that I believe is prevalent for today, for you right now. After walking out of COVID and all that we've come through, it's time to start your engines again. And I titled this message, Whose Clock Are You On? Whose clock are you running? I don't know about you, but I, I have certain shows that I like to watch on TV. I don't know about you. I have Dish Network. And so how many of you have watched Rush, Gold Rush? You ever watch Gold Rush? I like watching Gold Rush, and I, I like that. It's a great show. It's, it's fun. I like to watch Parker and, man, all this crazy stuff he does. And the young man, he's an entrepreneur, and he really seems to be successful in what he's doing. I don't know how he gets that gold. I think he buys it, and then he, uh, then he tapes it and says he digged it out of the ground because nobody gets it like Parker, but Parker gets it. And then, I don't know about you, but I also like watching um, the uh, Duck Dynasty. How many of you watch Duck Dynasty? Right, right. I don't know about a few years ago, we had Chase come here, and you, it was at Webster High School, and we, I went to see Chase when he was here, and I like Duck Dynasty, and it's a good, clean show. But then I also, I like to watch, believe me, I know, I know, I'm a man, but I like watching Food Network, right? I, I like watching Food Network, and how many of you ever seen the show Carnival Treats? Carnival eats, carnival treats, when the guy goes to all the carnivals, right, and he tries all the different new foods that they have at the carnivals, whether it be hot dogs on, on a stick or pickles, fried, whatever the case may be, he does all these crazy foods, right, and he goes and samples them, and after he gets done sampling them and showing them, guess what I want to do? I can't wait for the state fair. I go to the state fair, and after I leave the state fair, I take the state fair back with me, amen? I don't know about you, I take all the cheese curds and all the different kind of foods that they have there at the state fair because I like to do that. But then I also like uh, watching Man versus Food. I mean, I watched that program, right? Man versus Food. The guy pigs out. He tries to beat the clock. But he has to eat this big portion of food before the time runs out. He's on a time schedule, and he's devouring all this food. But then there's another program that I like to watch. It's because it's competition. And I like competition, and I don't know about you, but competition keeps you on the edge. It keeps you prepared. keeps you ready. Well, there's a show called Chopped. Have you ever watched that show Chopped, right? The show, the show, the, and what happens is they get all these chefs together. And all these chefs together, and let's say they're making a chicken dinner or whatever, and everybody has to have chicken in their dish. They have to have chicken in their dish. It doesn't matter how they make it, but they have to have the main ingredient, Molly, as chicken, right? So here they are. They're on a schedule. They're on a timetable. And so they got this allotted time to make this meal, and then once it gets to the point of 10 seconds, they have a countdown. 
And I don't know about you, but, you know, Levi and, and you guys who played sports, anybody played sports, when you're down to that 10 seconds, what happens when you start having that 10-second countdown, all of a sudden you start getting antsy, you start getting nervous. Maybe the game is tied or you're down by one and you got the ball in your hand and you start feeling nervous, man, excited and sweating, man, like I got to make the shot or whatever the case may be. But on CHOP, what happens is they got, they got a countdown and they count it down from 10, 9, Eight. And then what happens, you can see they're scrambling all through the kitchen trying to put the last garnish on the plate or whatever the case may be. And finally, when they get down to one, they say, time's up. And once the time's up, they, what they do is they have to present their plates to the judges. And if their plate is not finished or completed, usually they're disqualified and they're sent home. And so they're under this gun and then the countdown to finish what they started. I don't know about you, but with God, there is no countdowns. And God put this message on my heart for you today because I believe that a lot of you have given up on your dreams and your hopes and your desires in life, and you feel like the countdown has already been counted down, and it's all over. And with this, if you have your notes, with God, our work with him and for him is not rushed or pushed. He just wants you to keep going. And I want you to get this in your heart. It's not rushed or pushed. God does not have you on a countdown. He doesn't have you on a clock. He just wants you to keep going. God wants you to keep progressing in your life. I don't know about you, but what happens with many people, they become like the Dead Sea. They become stagnant, stale, and stinky because they put themselves in park, and they never stop. Uh, they never progress anymore. They give up on those things in their lives, and they, therefore they become stinky, stagnant, and stale in their life because they stop progressing. God is not rushed or anxious, or uptight. He doesn't have you on a clock. He doesn't have you on a countdown. He's not rushed, anxious, or uptight. God doesn't run on your timetable. To be with the, day, the Lord with a day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day with God. He's not rushed. He's not uptight. And he does not want you as his children to be either. God doesn't want you to be uptight. God doesn't want you to give up. God doesn't want you to be frustrated. God doesn't want you to walk in anxiety and be a nervous pervis. God doesn't want that or desire that in your life. I like this. With God, there are no countdowns. There are no countdowns. you got to get this now. And with God, it is never too late. I hear people all the time say to me, Pastor, I miss my window. I miss my opportunity. I miss my goal. I miss the mark. That window has been closed in my life, and it's, it's too late. It's never too late with God. If you have your notes, I love this. It's never too late to dream. It's never too late to start dreaming again. It's never too late. It may be you put your dreams, your aspirations, and your desires, maybe you put them on hold, but I'm here to tell you today, it's never too late too late. You don't run on God's timetable, quit running on man's timetable 24-7. God's timetable is bigger than that. It's never too late to pray. I always say this, if you want change in your life, it always starts with prayer. If you want to see change take place, start praying. It's never too late to pray. If you're not praying, let me ask you, why are you not praying? If you're not praying, you're straying. I'm here to tell you, prayer, it's never too late to pray. I hear a lot of times people say, I'm not qualified. God won't accept me. God doesn't love me because I'm a failure in prayer. I don't pray every day. I don't do this. I don't do that. So therefore, God doesn't love me. He doesn't accept me. God just wants you to pray. It doesn't matter how you pray, when you pray, just pray. You can pray and talk to God when you're driving down the road. Amen? Make your prayer, your sanctuary, your car or whatever case may be, it's never too late to pray. But here's another one. It's never too late to believe. Some of you have lost your expectancy. Some of you have lost your faith to believe for big things in your life. You always say the thing is that it's never happened before. Why should I expect it now? That I never win at anything. Why should I think I'm going to do it now? If you believe, Matthew 21, 22 says, if you believe, you shall receive, Krista, whatever you ask in prayer. So believe. Let me ask you something. Believe. What are you believing for? And if you stop believing, why did you stop believing? Maybe because it didn't happen when you thought it was going to happen, when you wanted it to happen, when you thought that things were going to work out, and you had all these expectations, and it didn't come together. So now you're like, I'll believe it 
when I see it. And some of you got a license plate on the back of you. Instead of having freedom on the back of you, you have a license plate on the back of you. You know what it is? It's Missouri. Show me state. I'll believe it when I see it. And that's the license plate that you have on your back. I'll believe it when I see it. That's not what faith is. Faith is a substance of things unseen, but things hoped for. You need to start believing again. It's never too late to believe for God to do something big in your life. Another one is this. It's never too late to surrender. You see, surrender your goals, your dreams, and your things to God again. God says what you hold on to is all you're going to have. And some of you have been holding on to those things so dear that God can't take control or rearrange it or mold it or shape it into something new. You have to let it go. You have to surrender it and give it to God. What you give to God, God can take and use and rearrange and mold it and shape it into what he wants to do in your life. What are you holding on to that God wants you to let go of so he can shape it and break it and make it into what he wants to do? But here's the big one. It's never too late to begin again. It's never too late to begin again. And this is where God spoke to my heart about. It's never too late to begin again. It's what's happened, and here's what God spoke to me about, and I shared this in the first service, is that during this last year, what's happened, a lot of you through COVID, you put your dreams on hold. A lot of you through COVID, you made excuses that we can't do this, we can't do that. I missed that opportunity. I missed that window. That window's closed. It's too late. That, that was last year. God doesn't want me to do that anymore. And therefore, you, you've put your dreams on hold. And because of COVID, we said, oh, it's, it's too late. But I'm here to tell you there are some heroes in the room today that I really look up to, and I really mean this. I follow them. I love them dearly with all my heart. And they don't know that I'm going to recognize them, but I'm going to do it anyways. Amen? But there's some heroes in my life, and I'm serious, and I admire them because they didn't let it go. And one of those heroes is Matt Chadwick. Matt Chadwick has really touched my heart. Matt, will you just stand for a minute? I want to, this is Matt Chadwick, great man of God. He's really touched my heart. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Last year, Matt was preparing to run the marathon in Duluth. It was a 32-mile marathon. But all of a sudden, in his preparation, COVID hit. And when COVID hit, obviously, they had to cancel the marathon. And that's always been in his bucket list to run the marathon. And so now this year, they were able to do the marathon. And so guess what Matt did? Day in and day out, I would go to him and I'd say, Matt, how many miles did you run today? Eight. How many miles did you run today? Four. How many miles did you run today? Ten. And all the time, he was preparing. And this has always been his bucket list to run this marathon and to run a marathon. Matt could have said to himself, it's too late. I missed that window. It's closed. I'm older, a year older than I was last year. He could have made every kind of excuse there was, but he had a bucket list. And because he had a bucket list, he didn't allow the words of never too late to stop him from a dream and a goal and a desire that he had in his heart. And a couple weeks ago, guess what Matt Chadwick did? He went up to Duluth along with all his family and cheerleaders and supporters, and he ran the marathon there in Duluth, Minnesota, and he finished the, over the finish line 30-some miles, and Matt, I'm telling you, you are a hero in my eyes. He could have said, like many of you, it's too late. It's too late. I can't do it. I can't accomplish it in my life. It's too late. That window has closed. Have you said that to yourself now? Maybe things haven't happened for you. Another hero in my life that I admire and look up to and respect because she's 79 years old. Now she's 82. When she started down this road at 79 years old, Pastor Carolyn, our staff member, could have chosen to say it's too late. I missed the window. I'm 79 years old. Why do I want to go to schooling? Why do I want to try to get my license? Why do I want to try to do this? But Pastor Carol, at 79 years old, received her license and her credentials from the Assemblies of God. She could have quit. Come on. She could have quit. She could have given up. She could have said, it's too late. And many times what we're doing, the COVID syndrome has got people saying, it's too late. I missed my mark. I missed the window. But God says, it's never 
too late. In Romans chapter 11, verse 29, I love what he says. He says this, for God's gifts, his gifts, his talents, and his call are irrevocable. So whatever words, what God's put in you, his dreams, his promises, they're always yes and amen. God never takes them back. The only way the dreams expire in your life is by you quitting and by you giving up and by you throwing in the towel. And many times we look for excuses to give up on trying to excel and go forward in our dreams and our goals. It's time that we not only come out as COVID uh, victors, that we won this COVID war, we won the COVID val uh, battle, we won the COVID disease, we won all that, but it's time that we start winning again in our dreams and our hopes and our desires and our plans of life. It's time to start being people again and start living the way God called us to be and called us to win. And that's become all that God wants you to be. But he says his gifts and his calling are irrevocable. God puts in you, now get this, God puts in you, he never takes it from you, including your goals and your dreams. So if God doesn't take it from you, where does it go? It goes to waste because you choose not to pick up that mantle again and run. Some of you may say, man, I lost a year. I'm behind the eight ball now. I'm this, I'm that. But God said, I never take it from you. God's delay does not mean God's denials. Does not mean God's denial. Just because it's delayed doesn't mean that God is denying you of what he's called you to do and to be. Matt could have given, laid up and just said, forget it. I'm not going to do it. But Matt chose to say, hey, I may have been delayed a, a year, but I'm going to do it this year. And when he got done winning that race, I went to him and he said, Pastor, he said, that was great. He said, I finally got to fulfill one of the things that were on my bucket list. It was so cool to hear him say that. It's not his denial. With people starting to come out again, it's time to start your engines and run your race again. When I was writing this, it reminded me when I went to the Indianapolis 500. When I went to the Indianapolis 500 and they all got on the Indy track there in Indianapolis, and all of a sudden the announcer on the PA system said, gentlemen, it's time to start your engines. And there, once they heard that sound, all of a sudden, man, you could just hear a rumbling, a thunder-like sound. <laughs> of all those racers starting their cars. And it was so loud, it was so piercing, that my heart started to, 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 to just to bounce inside of me. Just like what happens when you turn up the bass here. Some people say it's loud in here, but I like it because it makes my heart, my heart bounce, right? And, and when they started their engines, man, it got me running, it got me excited. It just started pulsating because you know what? It meant something was getting ready to happen. It's time to start your engine again, start believing again, come off the couch and start running your race that God has laid out for you. Some of you need an oil change, new dreams, new goals, and desires in your life. You need to start believing and expecting something great to happen in your life again. Stop making COVID your excuse and say, I'm getting off the couch. I'm going to shake off my heavy bands. I'm going to get rid of the dust that's come up over me, and I'm going to start running my race again. I'm going to believe and accept what God has for me. It's time to run. Amen? You will never know how far you will go if you don't try. You'll never know. I love this. The results of expired dreams. I don't know about you, but my wife, every two months, she'll go through the refrigerator and she cleans out everything in the refrigerator. And I mean to tell you, she'll go through it. She'll look at every bottle, see the expiration date on it. I don't care if it's still good. I'll say, honey, that's still good. Well, it's two years old, but it still tastes good. She'll throw it away. And she'll get rid of all those things that are expired in the refrigerator. But you know one thing about God? God does not have an expiration date. There's no expiration date on God's dreams, plans, or desires in your life. God doesn't discard them just because it's a year later or two years later or three years later. God's gifts and his calling are irrevocable. He doesn't take back that which he gives you. They're irrevocable. And I love that when he said he'll, he'll, he'll give you the opportunity. So when you have the desires or your dreams expire, here's what happens. Here's what happens with people, the results of expired dreams. Maybe this is you. Number one, the first thing you do when your dreams you feel like are expired, you have a denial. And here's what happens when you start denying what God puts on you. Levi, what God has put in your life, 
you're a great young man. And I remember a few years ago, God's given you gifts and calling, and they're still alive in you. But here's what happens. Denial. You know what denial says? I did not really care about that anyways. So what you start to do when you start denying that what God put in you, and you start denying, you start questioning, you start putting it off, you start delaying, you start making excuses. Oh, that really wasn't there. You know what I always say? Cream rises to the top. And that which God puts in you, God will never take it away from you. So stop denying it, what God has placed in you. Here's another one, anger. Once, man, your dreams, you feel like you get expired, you get angry. You get mad at people around you because they seem to be prospering and succeeding and going forward. You're like the Joneses. And you start getting mad at what's happening over there, happening over there. I was saying this, anger, it's not fair that others have succeeded and I have failed. Have you ever done that before? You know, one of the biggest things, this is no kidding, I kid you not when I tell you this. You know, one of the biggest things that I counsel with people a lot about? This is no kidding, true story. This is one of the biggest things that I counsel people about. You know what it is? Anger over uh, Facebook. People, you'd be amazed how many people come into my office all the time that I'm counseling with people over Facebook. And it's not because of what's being said on Facebook. It's not the political things that people say and this, that, the other. You know what it is? People angry about that person and this person. Why do they get to do that? And why do they get to do this? And I can't do that. And they get angry with what they see their friends or their family doing, and they can't do it. You'd be amazed how many people come into my office that say, man, how come they always seem to go on vacation? And how come they always seem to be at the lake? And they're trying to keep up with the Joneses. And so, therefore, what happens, you'd be surprised about the therapy that I have to do, Pat, with people that are watching on Facebook that are mad at that person at this person. Why do they always seem to get? It's because maybe their dreams didn't get expired and yours did. And so now you're mad at the world because they're going forward and you're not. And so I'm sitting there with people in my office, and they're mad because they see everybody doing this on Facebook, but why am I excluded? Another one is this, bargaining. When all of a sudden you feel like your dreams are expired, what do you do? You start bargaining. God, if you make this happen, I'll give up. You fill in the blank. If you make this happen, God, I'll give this up for you, God. I'll do this for you, God. I'll do that. And you start bargaining with God. And God's like, why are you bargaining with me? Because I already gave it to you. All you have to do is put it into motion. And we start bargaining with God, and we start saying, God, I'll do this if you do that. And a lot of times when God does do this, you still don't do that. Right? We start bargaining. With God. But here's the big one. Depression. When your dreams are expired, all of a sudden depression sets in. What is depression? I am a failure. Ever felt like that in your life? I'm a failure. I'm a failure. You know that how many times when I was pastoring in Grand Junction, Colorado, how many times kids and adults would drive off the cliffs there in Grand Junction and commit suicide and take their lives? They would literally, because there's no uh, guardrails there in the mountains there in Grand Junction, and they would drive off the cliffs and take their lives. But you know when the biggest one was? When all of a sudden, when Shell gas stations, Texaco, the oils, uh, Hal Burton, when all those oil companies moved out of Grand Junction, all of a sudden there was such a great depression that hit Grand Junction. It was the craziest thing. You're talking about pastors. I was having a funeral, it seemed like every week, that people were driving off the cliff and taking their lives because they felt like their world came to an end. But depression will make you feel like a failure. My life is terrible. You start comparing yourself to others, and you look at yourself, and you know what? It's not the peanut gallery that's putting you down. It's yourself. And a lot of times what we're doing, we're our worst critic and we put ourselves down. The Bible says that the, the tongue has the power of life and death, and you will eat the fruit thereof. What are you speaking into your life that's bringing discouragement, defeat, and depression in your life? My life is terrible. What a waste I am. And I see many people that feel this way. And then when they get to that, here's what happens next thing. This is what a big one, acceptance. Well, this is who I am. This is what I'm going to be. This is what I'm going to do. This is all I am. And we accept 
where we're at in life. And so, therefore, because we accept in life, we just become that frog in the water. We just stay there until our life is finally taken. Except, oh, well, it's never going to happen. Have you ever said that before? Never going to happen. Why do I believe? Why do I expect? It's obviously, it's too late. It's too late for me to have this happen in my life. Have you ever said that before? It's too late. I missed my window. I missed my opportunity. In Genesis 18, I love what Jesus talks to Sarah. And Sarah there, go ahead, Pastor Andrew, you can just go ahead. It's already that time. Sarah there, as you, many of you know, was 90 years old. She was unable to fulfill her purpose in life, and that was to be a child bearer for her husband, Abraham. And look what it says. It says in verse 10, Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. And Sarah, your wife, will have a son. Something that, man, here I am, 90 years old, and now you're going to bring me a son? Cheryl and I are getting ready to go on vacation with our five oldest grandkids. And we're thinking about ourselves, man, we're, we're a little older. we got five of our restless grandkids. So we're strategizing. Here's our strategy. Honey, we're going to take power naps between the days. So when, when I'm tired, I'm going to go take an hour, and you take them off, and you go with them to the pool or whatever, and then come back, and then I'll take, you take your power nap, and I'll take them away. We're strategizing how we're going to prepare for our five grandkids. So I can imagine 90 years old. But look at this. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind him. Abraham and Sarah were already very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. But watch this. So Sarah laughed. Laughed to herself as she thought. After I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Can I ask you something? How many of you have laughed? Maybe God is speaking to you in your life right now. Maybe God wants to bring up new wells in Isaiah 43. See, I'm doing a new thing. Even though you can't perceive it, I'm doing a new thing, making a way in the desert where you cannot see. Maybe some of you are laughing. Maybe some of you are laughing even as I'm speaking right now under your breath. Oh, Pastor CJ. He don't know what he's talking about. Sarah laughed. This can never happen. Never be. I missed that window. I missed that opportunity. You never know if you don't try. Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, well, I really have a child now that I am old? But look at this next verse. Look at this next verse. Is anything too hard for the Lord? What do we believe that God's the God of the impossible? Luke 18, 27 says, that which is impossible with man is possible, Greg, with God. And many of us laugh. Who, me? I'm not qualified. I'm not capable. I'm not able. I'm not good enough. I'm not good looking. I'm this and that. And we criticize ourselves and we laugh at the good things that God wants to do in your life. And you wonder why you get mad or angry, upset. It's because you are forfeiting what God wants to do in you. And you're laughing. When God wants to say, no, why are you laughing? I'm the God of the impossible. I can do big things in your life if you just open up and receive again. Come off the couch. It's COVID is over. Excuses are over. He goes on. I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will rise and have a son. Now watch this. Sarah was afraid. Can I ask you, why are you afraid? If God is for you, who could be against you? If you can do all things through Christ, then why are you afraid? If the battle is not yours, it's God's, then why are you afraid? You see, we're afraid to step out of our comfort zone. You know what a comfort zone is? A comfort zone is a rut. It's a routine. It's what you're used to. It's what's common for you. And so whenever you try to get out of that rut or that comfort zone, you become afraid. And what is fear? False evidence appearing real. It'll keep you and maintain you and hold you longer than you want to stay. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, yes, you 
did. Are you laughing? Are you believing that God wants to do something big in your life? Don't give up on your dreams because God didn't give up on you. Your dreams are still alive. COVID is over. It's time to start living again. It's time to start believing again. I close with this story. This ain't even in my notes. For some of you that maybe are older in age or maybe you're not married yet or you're planning on getting married, you want to get married, my sister Marlis, she is the fourth oldest of my sisters. I had six sisters and then my brother. My sister Marlis is the fourth oldest in our sister line. And Marlis was, man, getting older in age. And then all of a sudden she hit 35. And all of a sudden from 35, she hit 40, thinking that she was never going to see marriage. After she turned 40, going into being 41, just shy of being 41, she met the man of her dreams. His name is Rich, Rich Cemente. Marlis and Rich got married. And through them getting married, they've had three beautiful daughters. Three beautiful daughters. And every one of them are now in ministry. But here's the crazy thing. My sister Marlis, I remember, I lived with her because I was kicked out of my home when I was a junior in high school. So I lived with her and I saw the burden that she had and the pain of thinking that maybe she wasn't good enough. I remember when she got married, I had an opportunity to be a part of her wedding. You know what she said? She said, Levi, I never lost sight of the dream of being married. You see, what you put in front of you, Daniel, is what you're going to go towards. And whenever you lose sight of it, whatever you lose sight of it, Camp Tamar, you're going to go off track. But if I keep my eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of my faith, that's what you're going to go towards. So what is your eyes on? What is your goal for? My sister today is so blessed. She's now getting ready to have their second grandkid. And her husband is now almost Sarah's age, 70-some years old, and having a second grandbaby, a newborn. And Rich is like, oh, my goodness, God, you're going to have to give me new strength. My point is, it's never, Jessica, too late. It's not too late. Start again. Believe again. Get off the couch and let God do something big in your life. Stand with me today. Amen. There's my hero right there, Pastor Carolyn. There she Give it up, man. She, she's amazing. I bragged about you today. She was out counting money, I think. Man, can I pray over you this morning? I was rushed through the day, but I'm going to tell you something. You've got to believe again. Terry, I'll tell you, your husband can play softball, man. He's good. Man, you should see us on our softball team. We're, we're like 3-1 and one right now. we we got a good team. You should come out and watch us. Amen, Andy? Your son can play, too. Plays catcher, but that's okay. He can play that. <laughs> I got to tease them, man. I got to get them, you know. Let me pray with you. Father, I thank you for this wonderful congregation. As we get together with family and friends today and celebrate the freedom of our country, I pray, God, that we'll never forget the freedom that we have in you. That freedom to explore, to dream, to desire great things in our lives. You come to give us life and life more abundantly. And let it be so to this congregation. Thank you for bringing them out. They could have stayed home and chose to be elsewhere, but they chose to be in church today. And I pray that you will bless them for it. Go with us now as we go our way. For we thank you, Father, for this day. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. God bless you. We would like to thank you for joining us for service this week. Adventure Church is a tool within God's toolbox that He is using to further His kingdom. If you have been blessed by this ministry, please consider giving. Your generous donation will ensure we're able to continue to provide these online services many people have come to rely on. You can find a safe and easy giving link within the description of this video or one of these three options you see here. 
Thank you in advance for your generous donation.